Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two books on bugs. The first book I'm going to be talking about is called Of Cockroaches and Crickets, Learning to Love Creatures That Skitter and Jump by Frank Nischk and translated from the German by Jane Billinghurst. This book was published in 2023 by Greystone Books and the hardcover copy that I received for free from the publisher for reviewing purposes comes in at 232 pages. This book is a mixture of nature and memoir. The author is an entomologist, and he uses stories from his doctoral research, all of his travels, his discoveries, and his many mishaps, as a vehicle to teach us as the readers about the critters he studied. He actually accidentally stumbled into studying cockroaches. It is not what he initially set out to study. He only started studying them after his studies on hummingbirds fell through. But studying cockroaches, it ended up being a very interesting, if unconventional, conventional line of study for him. Right at the start of the book, the author does acknowledge that most people tend to find cockroaches gross. They are kind of the physical representations of uncleanliness. But he takes a quick moment to observe that we humans tend to prefer creatures who are more like us, who even resemble us in certain ways. And then wisely, he moves right past that without attempting to convince you in that moment to like cockroaches. Instead, he tries to win us over with some impressive scientific information. And as it turns out, there's a lot to be impressed by when it comes to cockroaches. There's a diversity of species of cockroaches many of which are highly specialized. They have very clever survival strategies. They can be very social and very caring parents. And as we know, they are very hardy. Although it is an urban legend that they could survive a nuclear explosion, the heat generated by such a blast would kill off everything in the immediate vicinity. But as it turns out, cockroaches are much more tolerant of radiation than other life forms are. So all of a sudden, those rad roaches from the Fallout video game series. They strike me as a lot more realistic. But interspersed between all of these scientific details, we do also get stories of his time spent studying the insects during his doctoral work, which is why I said this book is part memoir. I think the best ones are the funny ones from all of his misadventures in the lab, but there are also stories of his friends dealing with bugs. People at this time knew that he worked with roaches. So anytime anyone in his life had an issue with bugs, particularly in their home, Home, if they had an infestation or some other problem, as we all will at a certain point, he would get a phone call. And bless him, he would occasionally find the time to investigate the problem. Eventually, though, for reasons outside of the author's control, he had to switch his research to crickets. And for that, he traveled to the rainforest of Ecuador, with which he quickly fell in love. He was there to study bioacoustics and the leg colors of the native crickets. So we hear all about the research, and we also get other stories from his time there. And this is where I'll note that while the two insects featured in the title do take the most focus, all different creatures are discussed throughout this book. And when you think about it, that does make sense because nothing in nature exists in a vacuum. It's not like the world contains only cockroaches and crickets. All of these different creatures exist in nature together. They interact with one another, some prey on others. So in this book, we hear about ants, wasps, beetles, spiders, even at one point, bears. That cameo comes about because there is a certain moment in this book where it turns into an extended conversation about what we humans are doing to the world and how important conservation is. And let me be very clear, that was not an unwelcome or even an unpleasant discussion. The author is just as charming and enthusiastic within it as he is everywhere else in the book. And it's all important information. It's just that at that point in the book, it ceased to be a book about bugs and started becoming a book about conservation. And that's not why I picked this up. It almost felt like a different book had been Frankensteined onto this cute little nature book. It didn't belong there and I could feel it. That issue with the book in mind, this ended up being a three-star read for me. Before it turned into what felt like an entirely different book, this was just a very lightweight, enjoyable book on bugs. One that actually really surprised me how fun it was to read, especially given how hated one of the titular critters is. Cockroaches absolutely fall into the creepy crawly category. But this author's passion for his field 
carries this book. And it's honestly adorable how that passion has more or less made him blind to just how off-putting most people find cockroaches. He's worked with them for so long, he's lost that ick factor. He doesn't find them gross. He just doesn't see them that way anymore. So I did enjoy parts of this, but ultimately... I was left a little bit unsatisfied. And that's why I felt compelled to move on to Buzz Sting Bite, Why We Need Insects by Anne Sverdrup Tigesen and translated from the Norwegian by Lucy Moffat. This book was published in 2019 by Simon & Schuster. And the hardcover copy that I checked out from my local library comes in at 256 pages. This book's author is a professor of nature management and forest ecology at the Norwegian University of Life Sciences. And this is only one of her books on the natural world. It's organized in the form of these very concentrated mini essays, and then a bunch of those mini essays are tied together by a common theme to make up this book's chapters. Each one of those little essays contains so much incredible information about all different bugs. She doesn't focus on any one insect in each of the chapters or the sections. Rather, she drops facts about different insects as it pertains to the topic she's dealing with at that time and all of the information she provides, it's fascinating. It's fun to know. And I would think that it would serve as something very entertaining to pass along to other people at, say, a dinner party or another type of gathering. So for instance, she of course starts off by talking about how bugs evolved. She then talks about their physical structure and all their capabilities. Like bees have counting abilities and wasps and dragonflies make hyper-efficient predators. And then she moves into topics like how bugs eat, how they avoid being eaten, and also how they reproduce. Eventually, the author does bring humans into the picture, first talking about the role bugs play in our food production, and then other uses we find for them, how we learn from them, how we imitate them, and even how they're used for research, like in the case of fruit flies. And since bugs assist in decomposition, which is a vital role they play within the environment, that's discussed as well. She also talks about how they can be used to solve crimes, which is likely something that any fellow fans of the TV show CSI out there already know, since Gil Grissom was an amateur entomologist. In my humble opinion, it is impossible to walk away from this book without your jaw being on the floor. Although it may not be advisable to have your jaw on the floor if any of the critters from the book are currently around. Everything this author talks about is incredible. And even though a ton of information is being deposited directly at your feet, it never feels like overload because everything is so well organized and just downright entertaining to read. It is a very snappy, very fast paced book with truckloads of personality. I mean, this author, she is so funny. She is very aware of pop culture. She's dropping in references all over the place. And she's super smart without coming off as intimidating. This is just a fantastic book. I had so much fun reading it. I loved it. No notes for me. It's a five-star book. With that rating differential, I am sure you can figure out which of these two books I recommend more. But I wanted to take a moment to put them side by side like this, because unsurprisingly, given the fact that these are both about the same subject, they did have a couple of things in common. But the most surprising thing they had in common is that they both are translated books. That is not something I realized when I went to pick up either of these books. And to the credit of both of these translators, it's also something I forgot about as I was reading both of these books because the translations are in fact that smooth. Beyond that similarity, I also did find it notable that both of these authors confronted the question that people often raise when it comes to bugs, that question being, why do we need insects? And first of all, they're a little bit offended by the question, like these creatures don't need a specific purpose for us in order to earn the right to exist. But it's easy to see through reading these books, Buzz Sting Bite especially, that they are essential. And we do actually need them. As Anne Sverdrup Tigesen says in the intro to her book, insects are nature's little cogs that make the world go round. Even if we don't love insects, we do actually need them. And I think it can only help all of us to learn more about the important roles they play, to learn about the different ways in which we need them. And picking up one or even both of these books is a great place to start. It's a great way to get closer to bugs while keeping a safe distance. 
But those were my thoughts on these two books on bugs. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. In the description box below, I've put links to everywhere you can get your hands on copies of these books if you are interested. And also in the description box, I've included something I like to call the further reading section, where I've listed out some book titles that you might want to check out if this is a topic that interests you. And at the very bottom of that exact same description box, you will also see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, the Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active, in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and what I'm doing right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.